crowd a good 15, 1,800 people, but if you get the students out, and I definitely, I saw the football guys up there, I saw the soccer guys, I saw some track kids, it's, it just was a big, big time thing. Um, but our crowd was incredible, and that that's a big difference maker. I talked about what Will, how it was down at Wilmington, Charleston's a known team like that. Um, and if we can get our building that full and people screaming, especially the students, it just gets loud and it, it gives you a true home court advantage. Um, so I'm so happy that people are liking what we're doing and coming out and really supporting these guys. And then for Drexel, um, two great college basketball games when we played them. The first one, we overfouled, okay? We, we had a good plan. We played them great, and we, we just fouled them too much, and they got 33 made free throws. And tonight, we didn't foul them too much, and it was just a good, really good college game. Zach Spiker, since I've been in this league, I've probably been the most – he's probably the closest that I'm – him and Pat Scurry are buddies, okay? I know Spiker knocked us out. He was the Army coach, but his father – worked in Chapel Hill when he was a young guy, before I even got there. So there's just so much respect for him. And this is college basketball, so, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes even friends get hot with each other. Um, I didn't like that he said I called the office to complain because I've never called any league office to complain about fouls or calls or anything. So Spiker's my man. Um, he's trying to stay at the top of the league, and we're trying to – breakthrough to get up close to him. So uh, just a good college basketball game. <coughs> he, he was so intimidated and they came back on and got the lead and, and won that game. Here they came back on and got the lead and now you come back and win. Is that, is that maybe a sign of growth of this team? I definitely, I definitely think it, it's growth. And, and Steve, you and I have talked about this. This team, there's, there's just so much opportunity to grow. You know, just because everybody's in a role that they haven't done for a long time. Um, Xander's in a new role. Um, then my young guys, when they're coming in, Jarrett, you know, he's he's in 23 games. And it just, you know, today Boog got down because he made a couple mistakes on defense. And then you can totally see we hang our heads. And tonight it only lasted for a little while. And then we got it going again. So we're a team that, the sky is still the limit, I think, um, that you can beat Drexel. They're first. You can beat Towson at home, okay? And I don't even know who we, the other day who we beat. Um, those are the top teams. So if you can beat them at, on your home floor, maybe you have a chance on a neutral. So I'm telling these guys, we keep getting better and, and put ourselves in a good position. We'll have a great chance at the tournament. A month from now. Jim, you seem to relish those late game situations when the ball's in your hands. Talk about that and that mentality of you're leaving the basket and I'm going to get it, I'm going to get fouled. Or, or yeah, I mean, you got to give Drexel a lot of credit. They made it very, very tough on me both games. They kind of switched their coverage from the first game on the pick and roll this game. Um, so it kind of took me a little bit, a little bit of time to figure it out. Um, uh, he was telling me kind of get, try to get off the ball early and get it back late clock and stuff like that. But, yeah, you know, as, as far as the late game situations, like, I, I mean, I, I've spent hours in this gym um, since I was a little kid, you know what I mean? So these the coaches, my teammates, have just put all the confidence in the world in me, um, and I'm, I'm starting to have that confidence in myself, and it's showing late in the games. Easy, Steve. Easy now. Don't call him. Don't tell him that, Steve. Y'all quote, that, y'all don't quote that line. The master of it. Please don't tell him I like that. that. I, oh, like, I think I like that one. I, mean, I think you, you, you bailed it out a few times in the first. Talk about kind of getting in the flow and you really seem to be able to see the flow offensively. Um, I think coming up the court, I try to look for my teammates. I think I'm a pass for it. First point guard, I try to get everyone involved. But Coach Rice always tells me when it gets down to that time, someone's got to go. So I just felt that I had to help Zan uh, get him, free him up a little. And I think when I started getting going, they had to worry about me and attacking. So it opened up stuff for him, which we need him to have great games. We need him to, as just simple as it is. 
Uh, we play our best when he's out in front with the most points, like he has been doing it for us all season, and we just been helping him. We're just trying to help him, and we're trying to win games, and I think that's the best part of it because then, like I said, he has 22 points, but he's not the one that's pushing for these shots. We, I, I have to tell him, like, this is my brother. This is my guy. I got to tell him, hey, we need you to go. Like, when you go, we go, and he's not. He's the most unselfish guy I've played with in college basketball, and I think um, – I just think it's a great team effort, and my teammates always help me to keep going, and I think my coaches give me the confidence to play. So I think I've, I've been getting out of my shell recently, and I think uh, the coaches and my team has definitely helped that. So kudos to them. And this is one of those really physical games for the team inside the game. Um, it, it just seems all season long he, he doesn't shy away from any of that. Both by that, and he scored some really – no, and we, you know, last game they dominated us on the boards, and, and that was disappointing for all of us, you know, to out-rebound us the way they did, the way where we felt like we outplayed them, and, you know, when you foul as much as we did, that means you're the little brother. You, you couldn't do You remember when you had your brother, and he, he just bully you, and you, you had to grab him and call for help, and that's what they did to us, and it didn't feel good. You know, and but Keita didn't take any steps backwards, but we totally talked about it. And Keita, you need to outplay him. You need to be physical with him. Amari's such a talent, you know, and he just keeps getting better. He's long. He blocks shots. He's scoring the ball. You know, you got to make him work. He can bring it up the floor. There's just so much that the kid can do. So you just you take your hat off to him, but you got to challenge him. I don't care who you play against. You challenge him. You go right to his chest. You you. You know, we got some plays in there where if we execute them, we're going to score without with him getting out the way. And, you know, we didn't execute all of them, but Keith is never going to take a, a step backwards. And I'd, I'd credit that to he's from Ukraine. Okay, he's from the Ukraine, man. I've never met a kid from there that's not tough. Okay, and then just what his family's going through right now, and he's here playing ball, there, there's no backup in Nikita. And I'm glad that he's with us. A little contentious there in the second half. Is that just two teams playing hard? Or? Yeah, I think, it, you know, like I said, Zach's one of my friends. And, you know, there was a lot of, he's complaining, he's this. And it's like, come on, man, don't do that. You're too good of a coach. You got the best team. You know what I mean? Come on, man. And, you know, so I walk out and clap, which I always used to do those types of things. But then everybody thinks I'm trying to do something. So I just did what I always used to do. And then their kids thought I got too close. But kids, that's what my guys would do. My guys would step, step up for me. His guys going to step, step up for him. I love how Zach does it, okay? I saw him before the game. We talked for about 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And he goes, man, I got to stop being so nice. I'm going to try to kick your butt in a few minutes. And I said, and I'm trying to kick yours too, okay? And that's, that's just what this is. And there's no hard feelings. I don't got any hard feelings. It, you just got to calm down because I didn't want to say something to Zach after the game, that's going to hurt our friendship, okay? So today was just a quick handshake. I talked to the other guys, tell him we'll wrap again later, and just, you know, let's keep it cool. And I expect their kids to step up, okay? I expect their kids, if they think someone's saying something to their coach, not that you should, that's what I'm telling my guys, don't say anything, let me handle me. But I, I understand, if you see your coach arguing with someone, you're going to step up and, you know, I'm glad, I, you know, the refs always run to me. And I'm like, guys, y'all always try to put it on me. I did not do anything. One of their guys touched my chest. Well, we tried to make sure you – guys, I will never touch somebody's player. Okay, stop all the fake narratives and all that stuff. I don't do – I haven't done any of that. It's 13 years, guys. I don't touch somebody. Uh, I did that when I was younger, and I learned from it.